So firstly, I suppose, what are compliance costs? I suppose there's an awful lot of things you could include in, com in terms of compliance costs to, to establish an acceptably safe operation. You've got competency in health and safety training, inductions, toolbox meetings, hazards, hazops, stakeholder engagements, including community, uh, health and safety audits, PPE, emergency response provisions, emergency response staffing, health and safety staffing, safety case development and maintenance. Not an exhaustive list, but you could go on and on and on and on. So what does the research actually tell us about compliance costs over, over recent times? I did a little bit of digging and I came up with a couple of papers um, from the H HSE. Um, and they looked at uh, small, medium and large companies in, in the construction sector in the, U in the UK. The, uh, a large company being over 5,000 employees, um, medium 1,000 to 5,000, and then small being 1,000, which are you know, pretty significant companies or operations anyway. And the medium to large organisations reported spending most on training and PPE. Uh, large organisations believe that the benefits outweigh the costs. Uh, they were obviously motivated by legal requirements. Uh, those operating for a long time had mature SMSs and uh, medium-sized organisations reported more events than smaller or large ones on a per capita basis, uh, which is seen as a failure to report in small organisations. They reckon small firms spent seven times more per employee than large organisations and medium-sized organisations spent 15 times more per employee than, than large ones. And the uh, thinking around these, these uh, facts were that economies of scale is one of the reasons that uh, large companies per capita costs are less um, and it was essentially disproportionate for smaller company uh, organizations as they often had to use consultants to establish their systems and processes etc. There was another study uh, done by the Department of Business and Enterprise and Re Regulated Reform in 2008 uh, came up with similar sorts of data um, they estimated that uh, SMEs spent about six times that of large enterprises on a per capita basis, which again, you know, similar kind of numbers, uh, amounted to a large range between 60 to $600, depending on the size of the organisation. Uh, the Federation of Small Business Research estimated that the uh, SMEs spent about 1000 per employee per year to remedy non-compliance. Um, these are direct costs such as insurance, compensation, medical bills. Uh, drivers to comply included uh, legal requirements, insurance costs, adverse publicity, peer and societal pressure. And I think that's one of the big things with, when we look at compliance costs. It's a dynamic thing. Societal expectations, or if you want to call it license to operate considerations, are dynamic. They're changing. You know, what was acceptable 100 years ago, 10 years ago, one year ago, it's changing. Uh, expectations are ever increasing that the, the, the outcomes are acceptable to, to general society. There's no doubt that the cost of an adverse event is more likely to drive a small enterprise out of business than a large one, though of course large ones are not immune. You know, Occidental after Piper Alpha, Union Carbide after Bhopal, and uh, if you believe everything you read, um, and I did get my life back, but BP were lucky to survive after the Deepwater Horizon event. So, and they probably haven't fully paid for their uh, problems there yet. Uh, Purvis in 99 stated, 1999 stated that safe firms have healthier profits. Um, and they stated that economic performance is not usually linked with health and safety performance per se. Um, sustainable performance probably is. Uh, the proof of the pudding is, is evidence after a small event or small firms go bust. Good safety systems also pervade all other systems. So, uh, non-compliance is at your own risk, essentially. Can you afford not to comply? That's the, the big question. Uh, a UK study published in February 2017 found that getting caught results in costs that are 65% higher than it would have been if you'd actually spent the money and complied. The study also found that fines are rising more steeply than compliance costs. This is very evident in the UK. 
um, and in uh, Western Australia at the moment we're looking at harmonising our fines, which means they're going up. Um, in UK they talk in terms of multi-million dollar fines and prison sentences these days. So the cost of non-compliance for their individuals and companies can be pretty severe. Admittedly a million dollar fine to a multinational is pocket money, tea money, it's not a lot but it's the uh, social licence that starts to become a bit of a problem. Uh, we've seen in, in uh, Brazil what happened after the failure of the dam and uh, you know, senior executives over there being arrested. So summing up, societal attitudes are dynamic, expectations change continually to halt towards higher standards of performance. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Inflation is a fact of life as well, of course. Impacts vary across organisations dependent on size. Compliance is cheaper than non-compliance. High levels of compliance both internally and externally pervade all areas of performance leading to better profitability overall. The theory is if you do these things well then your organisation is likely to be doing everything else well as, as, as you perform. You are going to perform in all of your areas. Compliance costs will always go up in real terms. There is however a silver lining within these costs as you get or well, you can expect efficiency and productivity gains with the investments in compliance. So that's my little introduction, and I'm a little bit ahead of time. I was worried that we were behind time, so I can take a couple of questions if uh, anybody has any at this point in time. Not stunned silence, come on. <laughs> I get this a lot. I go and talk to my staff. No one asks me any questions. Apparently, I'm a really grumpy. Uh, someone you can't approach. I was talking to the guests. We have a question at the back. Simon, I've just, um, um, and unashamedly, I want to lead into some discussion which I hope will happen later. But I think you mentioned that there's some doubt about safety performance increasing company performance. In my mind, there would be no doubt that if you. There'd be no doubt that if you have a higher level of safety performance, you have less rework, you have less costs, and your operation will perform much better. Absolutely, that's the point we're making. It, you know, your safety performance will you definitely pervade all other areas. Um, your input into uh, the systems, the processes, the expectations that flow with that from the workforce are going to develop a level of or a compliance mentality. You know, it's how we do things around here. And there are multiple studies that say that companies that actually put the effort in, put the money in, are actually going to have successful outcomes in all areas. 